back to the Right Wave Audio community. My name is John, and today we're actually going to get to uh, measuring our subwoofers so we can determine where to position them in the room. And we're going to start with uh, getting the levels matched at near field, and then we go from there. And we've got our room quieted down. We've got rid of that 99 cycle hum that we were getting from the computer upstairs. If you missed that video, it's the last one. I'll put the link up above. And um, let's go Let's go at this. Let's uh, bring up our sound pressure meter and room equalization wizard. And we're going to generate uh, test tone here. And we're going to do this uh, just right now. We're going to do, so we set this to noise, full range. Uh, we'll set this at minus 20 to begin with. Put it as full range. We are going to do uh, pink random noise. And uh, we'll put this out to the right output. Generate it. So this is at one foot away from the center of the cone. And we're holding around 70 five decibels and that's got the level for that one and now we'll do the level for the second one turn that off turn this one on move the microphone over and give that one a shot. This one's a little high. This time I'm going to turn it down on the volume in the back here. There we go. So the first subwoofer, I adjusted the preamp and got that one to the level I wanted. But I didn't want to touch that again. I wanted them to be at the same level uh, with the preamp at the same setting. So uh, by then adjusting the volume on the back of the subwoofer, I've now level matched them uh, accordingly. So we're going to do a measure. And we'll just sweep this zero to 200 hertz and do a start. Well, that shook the whole house. Well, this went straight up. This is looking pretty darn good. This is just in its current position at near field. That's let's mark this as such as the near field. We'll call this um, sub one left. Okay. Now we'll try it at different positions. So now it's time to make measurements from the listening position, and we're again we're using uh, this music uh, microphone stand, which are not too expensive, but gives you a lot of uh, ways to adjust it. In fact, I like it because we want to have some repeatability on those five microphone positions. The first position I'm going to do is at ear level, which happens to be right when you put this crossbar perpendicular at the lowest position. So that's that's um, makes that repeatable. We can always set this up the same way. We're centering it on the couch, which between between the two cushions, and we're adjusting out with the with the stand as close to the couch as it can go, the crossbar out a foot for the first position. One foot, position two, two feet, position three, two feet, but over to where the, that portion would be sitting. Position four, 
and then position five with this all the way back. So that will be our repeatable distances. So let's let's get this going. We're doing it again at the 90 degree angle, and we're ready to take some measurements of our subwoofers from zero to 200 hertz. We'll check our levels. The levels are good, and we will start our sweep. All right, so compared to the near field, this is expected to be lowered down. Look at the dropouts we have at 100 hertz and also at around 170 hertz. Very interesting. So we're going to try the other positions. This is at the main listening position right now. So I'll do this the main listening position. And we'll just call this position one. Main listening position. And okay, um, sub one. Okay, so that is done. Let's do another measurement, but we're going to do this at position two, which is one. And having these different positions is going to give us the sense at two feet. Okay. And we're going to do this again, position one, main listening position. That one was done, so let's do the next one. We're going to hit measure, and we're going to hit start. We're getting the same dropouts, a little different responses down here below 10 hertz, but not going to worry about those. And let's see here, we'll try the next listening position. Actually, I'm going to keep it in this plane first. We're getting the We're same make this position three. A little different responses down we'll here. We'll label this hertz. other one first. So this is going to be position two um, minus a foot on center for sub one. Okay, we're going to do another measurement. That first one was plus a foot. And this will be minus a foot and we're gonna hit measure and start. Getting the problems in the same spaces, let's label this one as position three. And this will be the minus a foot from center for sub one. Let's do this again. We're going to turn this, we're gonna make it We'll do this full out and about a foot from the edge. And this will be the right side of a couch. So we hit measure. So this is this new one. I'm really curious how this compares with the first position. It's got a bigger dip out here at uh, 150 hertz. I'm really curious how this is so not quite as good position in that position. So we're going to label this one so as position four. Here at, uh, and this one's going hertz. to be um, so not quite as good. Right of main listening position. position. So we're going to for label this one. one as position four. And we have one last measurement. And we're going to do this again. Um, no, right. Not entirely signed position, but at least I'm Here's trying to one. set this up so it's the positions are fairly close. If you really wanted to do this, we could hang things from the ceiling and uh, line up with plumb bobs. Uh, we're always going the same. Well, we have a microphone ray that's on a rig that's always. Uh, getting it in the same position, but uh, this is this is the cheap way of doing it and may be good enough. And this is left versus right side of the couch. So that was right. This is left similar, but what we're getting here 
right about this spot is an extra dip at 35 hertz. So comparing, that was there in the center. So each has its own problems, some a little more than others. So this will be a good stopping point until we will move the speaker in uh, the subwoofer into a different location and see how that impacts the results. I'm not going to go sub far with this sub. This one I'm going to try about somewhere between a quarter and a third into the room against the wall behind under this table because I'm hopeful that what is going to fit best for us for the room, hiding it underneath the table, getting it out of the way, is going to be um, ide sonically the best. Now, if that would be good luck. <laughs> Let's try it. It helps if you use these the right way. <laughs> oh yeah, what a difference. Do not try to lift these well over a hundred pounds. We're right under this table. The other good thing about putting it at a table is that it keeps it away from uh, the kids. They don't get their finger marks all over it. People don't use it as a coaster. And uh, yeah. So it might keep it in better shape. The other thing I like about this position is there's a power outlet right behind it. Okay, now we just need to get the signal to it. Temporarily using these old composite cables until all right. Temporary wiring, it's a little short, and it's not a great cable, but um, once we know this is a good position, we can go out and get a cable that's the right length and is gonna do it in the right way. I'm plugging it into the LFE input because it's not um, high pass, uh, low pass limited uh, like, like the line in is. We're going to do the same five positions as we did before. Okay, so we're going to measure this one. Same range. And we'll hit start. The levels are not as strong. Actually, we're getting bigger dip outs in this new location. So we didn't improve the situation, which is unfortunate. Well, we have two subs, we can play around, we can uh, leave that one as it is, and we'll try another sub in another position. Well, looking at these results, and initially, I was thinking it got worse, but then I realized that the where it got worse was above 80 hertz. So if we're crossing this over before 80 hertz, I don't have to worry about those suck outs uh, that are happening in the upper frequencies. Uh, now that's not as loud here in this location, but if I'm, my main goal is to have a smooth response, uh, I can just raise the volume up on these subs. They have plenty of oomph. I'm not nearly driving these as loud as they need to be. So um, not so concerned there. So they're looking like we're not introducing any more dip outs where this location is. So let's let's try this and then we're going to position the second sub in a different location and see if that improves anything all right so we're going to take the second sub and try this in a different position and uh, 
instead of being like a quarter in, maybe this is closer to a third of the way in, and uh, it's on the other side of the room. But our room isn't symmetrical. We have this L that moves out, so it's not a perfect square. So let's just do this test. Of course, before we do the test, we're going to uh, make sure everything is labeled correctly. The last two labeled. If it gets excited and you forget to do your your good testing procedures, so that was left the main listening position, and that was for sub one. The last one was um, sub one in sub one from the main listening position. Sub one or so it was, it was position one. Sub one main listening position, but this time it is in about a quarter in on left. So let's do a new measurement. Check the level. Level is good and start. This new one is here. This is actually stronger on this side. Remember, these were level matched beforehand. But uh, let's see. This has a suck out that's happening below 80 hertz. We might be concerned about that. That's at 74 hertz. And this other dip here is at 25. So let's. Um, I'm going to reposition this again. Now I'm not going to do all five positions until I think I've got this thing pretty close. So in, in the meantime, I'm just going to do the main listening position. So I'm going to write this as position one, main listening position. This is sub two, and this is about um, one third into the room on right. Let's reposition this. For the next one, we're just taking that second sub and we pushed it behind the couch, uh, just behind the, seat, the seating area. Maybe a little more than halfway in the room. Let's see what the effect is there. I'll turn off sub one. We'll just compare it to the first position, which was a third in. Uh, this is a little more than halfway this one's going to be. So let's do a measurement and start. Let's compare these now. Wow. There's some more dropouts, but these are above 80 hertz. It's actually doing better in that problem spot. So I do like this location a little better. because The other one had this big dip at 75 hertz. There's still a dip. It's happening at 80, not at 75, but it's not as pronounced. Uh, although it's a little bit more at the 25 hertz one, this is going to be interesting if we can resolve this standing wave here. Uh, maybe with the when the second sub gets incorporated. I'm going to try this in one more position. I've got the second sub now, and it is about two thirds into the room. And it's where I was hoping to place it. We'll see how that measures. But this is underneath the air hockey table, which uh, again keeps it out of the way. So we're going to do a measure. <laughs> Start the sweep. All right, so let's see. This is the new one. It's got that same suck out around 27 hertz. That's a general problem there. Moving it didn't seem to impact it. Um, and then everything else is above. Well, it's a little better because it's right at 80 hertz where it was dropping off there versus 75. I like that better. So if we compare the other positions at two thirds on right. So I actually was wrong there. 
what this is a little this is worse we were better when we were slightly behind the couch than where we are right now this is causing more of a suck out here at 27 hertz it's not as strong down below although we may not care so much under 10 hertz but definitely not as strong a performer in this location so i think this two-thirds position is out. Now let's compare the, the halfway to the one-third position. Those are similar, but I do like this one the best. Let me just check here. Now the question is, once I bring this back, is how does the two subs work together? So if this is sub one, sub two's best position. And this one here, I want to look at the, I think the brown, at least the brown, this is on the left. This is the new position on the left. How do those two improve? Well, I've got sub two back slightly behind the couch on the right. I left sub one in its about one quarter position on the left. Let's do another measurement with both going. I believe both are going. And let's hit start. So this red one now is the combined trace. So let's see, we still got this problem at 28 hertz. So that would suggest that I should probably try moving the second sub and adjusting for that because I do not, that did not really improve things. I do want to check to make sure I had actually had both subs going. It, it appears that uh, this could be the case. Well, let's just double check both are running. All right, I, I was wrong. I had my graphs mixed up. So the one that was actually better was two thirds back, not halfway. So I'm gonna try it. Instead of two thirds back, maybe about a quarter back, in, uh, or three quarters back into the room. And so we're doing that with a one third, uh, th one quarter, three quarters placement. So let's give that a try, but I'm going to start just with sub two running. So let's measure this. Start. All right, so this is comparing two thirds with three quarters. So this one, this is the last one we just did. This is three quarters. And this one is two thirds. So I think this looks better. So we're better at three, one quarter, three quarters than one third or one quarter and two thirds. So let's do this. It's a little closer to the corners in this case. So I'm gonna try this one. I'm gonna give this a label. So this is sub, this is going to be three quarters on the right. Now try both of them. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to turn the second sub on and start. And let's compare. Whoa. Why did we get this new suck out here? This one, the brown pen. That's trace seven with the last one. This is sub brown is sub one alone. The blue is sub two alone. And then this one is them combined together, which generally is strengthened except for this one dip out that's happening. Oh, well that's down below 10 Hertz. I am not going to worry about that. I like this. 
Let's go with this positioning. It actually works for us. Now we could fiddle around with this some more later, but I think this is going to be our starting point. Now to close off this session, we're going to measure in five different locations, both subs on at one quarter and three quarters into the room, one on the left side, one on the right side, and we're trying to get a nice smooth, ease and even response. So let's take a look at this as we go around the room. So do a measurement. We've already got them in position one. We'll get our ruler back here. Mic position two. And let's give this a go. Okay, that's position two versus position one. All right, so this will be position one, sub one at the label for this last one we just did is going to be position two. And then we'll do a new position. Position three, all the way back. Now we're going to do position four. And position five. I have to forget to label these things. And the last measurement. So now let's take a look at this on the five different seating positions. And we've got the last seating position was here. Almost looks the strongest. Let me just click some of these off. I have trouble looking at more than two of these traces at a time. So we can pick the best out of the two. So we're looking for who's going to perform the best up until I like this is a little stronger here, a little smoother. But then it dips down around 40. I don't like that because we might still need the sub to do its job there. Okay. Toss up between. They both have some their own issues. The position four is going to do not quite as well at 12 hertz, which we care less about. And position five isn't going to do well at 45, which is going to be more noticeable. So four is doing better than five. How does four do against three? Position three, uh, stronger down low, but um, better here at 12 hertz. Fairly a month of strain, but not quite as good at 45. Now let's take a look at compared to position two. About the same. The two didn't do quite as good here at 45 hertz. And then position one. Ah, so. Base is a little strong, a little better, it seems, in position four. So sitting a little right of center. Um, but the front and back doesn't seem to it. I would think we're doing okay here. So that wraps up our sub positioning. The next time we come back with this tuning, we're going to be using some more tools now that we've got this in position and uh, see if we can apply things like uh, equalization, phasing, timing, uh, and other factors to make it better. How do you go about your placement of your subwoofers, especially if you have multi-subs? Uh, are you trying it in different positions? Do you have the flexibility to move them? 
or do you have to make up for any deficiencies simply by the equalization and timing of the subs? That would be great feedback for the RightWave audio community. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to this RightWave audio community and be sure to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified the next time a video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.